Scorpio. Scorpio, Happy New Year. This is your forecast for January 2014 and uh, big month for you here when it comes to communication where everything just seems to come to a crescendo here. Starting off very at the top of the month, we have the Sun, the new moon, we got Mercury, we got Pluto and we got Venus retrograde all in your third house for communication, short distance travel and whatnot. Now, what, is, what does all this mean? Because, see, when we have New Year vows, it's like, yes, we put in all our intentions for uh, the fall year, and it's a double whammy because uh, the new moon is here today. And uh, in this, it's uh, also coupled up with Pluto, which is your ruler, making it extremely powerful and giving you a pivotal point of total transformation. So whatever it is you put in as uh, intentions here for 2014, you will see that it's going to carry with it the power of transforming the way you express yourself and the way you choose actually to be mm, in your everyday here and now life throughout the whole entire year is going to change. It may not all change all at once, but the energy that you're putting into it is slowly but surely with Pluto going to unfold here. So 2014 is going to be a very important year for you when it comes to rebirthing yourself and your intentions. Now communication can become a little uh, powerful perhaps here today, either coming from you or somebody around you. Um, we just always want to be careful for any kind of projections coming out because that's what Pluto can do. Make sure that you own up to what it is you think, you feel, and you express what words you put out here because the words is the third house. It's the house of Mercury, right? And Mercury is here too. So, and especially if it has something to do with, with the past because uh, Venus is going retrograde. Venus is love. Uh, it, it's those things that we also desire. It's the material world of desire as well. And it is money too. So there might be issues here coming up uh, of past things now being brought into light. So that might be somewhat focused. Uh, and that needn't come up, you know, as far as communication between you and somebody else. It could be the way you're thinking about what core values that's important to you. What is it you want from this year, Scorpio? What is it you definitely have such a deep desire to change in 2014? Now, if we talk about these core values, well, that is because Venus is who we are, what we value with ourselves. It's our self-esteem and so forth. And we know that you've been working on your core because Saturn has been in your sign here all of last year, really kind of giving you a little crunch, a little squeeze, so that you can find the essence of what it is now that is going to be important to you, not just here this year, but for the next 28 years, okay? Now, depending on your age, if you're younger, well, you weren't, you know, all that old those years ago, 28 years ago, but it, it, for you of higher age, um, you're looking where you've been in that last 28 year cycle. You're actually thinking, where do I want to be now in my next 28 year cycle? That's a span of four times seven years. We know the seven good years, the seven bad years, you know, the years of testing. But it's like we take one increment at a time, seven years at a time, seven, 14, 21, 28. And so right now it's more like, well, if I want to achieve something, I need to start doing it now and I think it's that power of the now that's really downloading to your consciousness that this is the year I need to create that change. So I don't meet myself in the same doorway 7, 14, 21, 28 years from now and not create a change. So change for you is where do you see yourself in seven years? Maybe that's the intention you have here on New Year's. Where do I see myself 14 years from now? Have I created a dynamic enough life change, uh, perhaps in the area of career, 
or my family life and structure or wanting to experience take in life as more of an adventure an expansion a spiritual growth so you're having a lot of these deeper thoughts here on New Year's Eve so it's not just you know the party time here for you uh, and I think you're gonna have a little bit of a, a need to kind of pull back if you're in a big crowd sure you're going to participate in the party but it's like a little need to pull back so you can have your at least five or ten minute meditation or time to have your intention out there because I'm seeing that you're quite serious as you're feeling all of these emotions New Year's Eve and well let's just chart up what more is going on and I'll come back to this as we start finding out your dates of the month um, we have Mars that has been quite busy here in uh, the latter part of November while it was transiting Virgo with a lot of thoughts uh, a lot of uh, analytical thoughts too and I think that was you also looking ahead which you might be experiencing now in um, January uh, and it, it's now currently in your 12th house pulling back now probably pretty much like climbing up to a higher perspective like up on top of that pyramid looking out over the valley of your life thinking okay so what is it I uh, concluded here in December uh, and parts of November there is this what I really want so right now this pull back in January has a lot to do with you recharging your batteries because you're gearing up to a whole two new year cycle coming up here later on next month when uh, Mars goes into uh, Scorpio into your sign and it will be crossing your rising sign so make sure that you do have uh, or do find time to kind of recharge this month Mars is going to need it because that is your your physical drive okay when you push yourself too hard this is the time that you might come down with a cold or an influenza or whatnot that's your body's way of saying enough already you need to chill out a few days right so if you're ahead of the game you might not fall victim to a virus that that will help you take your time off so then we also have Jupiter in your ninth house great place to have this Jupiter I think you're loving that because that has gotten you out and about and traveled a little bit more than earlier uh, Jupiter is foreign countries and places and people um, uh, in this area to, to nurture spirit and spirits growth and Jupiter here is still helping you look out to those areas you want to educate yourself to Jupiter rules education and it's in the house that it rules so higher education expanding your, your vision uh, your horizons that's what Jupiter does best so she's loving it here right now and in this area too we have the full moon which is coming in on the 16th so pay attention to what uh, Jupiter and the moon is doing there I think that that is going to be something that's going to feel very fulfilling to you so if you're signing up for a new course great time to do so then we have Uranus still in the sixth house you're trying to find you know the best balance to how to work and streamline your everyday today life that is finding the perfect balance between work and home and all the things that you schedule and need to do uh, and that might still be a little topsy-turvy for you but we have Uranus now moving direct ever since December 17th so you'll see that it's going to start catching up with you and helping you to move forward and create those good and positive strong changes that you can uh, benefit from and it also you know calls for a little bit of that health regime working out or making time that you take time off to do those things that you need for your health so let's start top of the month okay January 1st the Sun Mercury new moon Pluto all together in a stellium and plus we also have uh, Venus there retrograde and this is squaring Mars so Mars has now been building up all this energy wanting to rebel a little bit okay what is it rebelling uh, uh, towards well Mars is rebelling towards having to constantly fight for the time that you need to do those things that you need to do 
you know, and it might also be in the area of communication. Maybe there's been too much pressure on you, who's, you know, Pluto pressuring your, your need to communicate, how you communicate, or you pressuring yourself. So Mars is going to want to split off a little bit from it and rebel here on the third, uh, where it's also opposing Uranus. Uranus will always bring change, change to those areas which have just built up a lot of tension and Mars is saying that's it. So pay attention to what happens here. It's between the 6th and the 12th house um, and this is where I'm just saying pay attention to your health so you don't come down with a cold here on this day because your body will feel these energies, okay? January 6th and 7th though, that looks like it's good because Mercury is having some good communication with Saturn which has to do with structure. It has to do with yourself because Saturn is in your first house of self and I feel that's you taking good care of who you are here on this day. Same thing on the 7th when uh, Mercury also is communicating uh, Venus uh, with a conjunction. That's you communicating your needs, what you're needing and why. And I think as long as you're just thinking those things and your surroundings don't get to hear it, how do they know? You know, so don't hold back, Scorpio. It's time for you to communicate what you need so you can harmonize. Venus rules harmony, right? It's the ruler of Libra, the scales. So I'm thinking as you honor yourself by expressing, well, more is coming your way in a positive self-empowering way. Then we have January 11th, a great day, several transits. Venus now that had communicated the message that was important is now also anchoring in with Saturn in your first house. So it's like you, you're being heard and uh, some structure is now taking place. That's Saturn in the first house. And you're seeing that it, it behooved you to bring it out, not be silent, don't stuff, because we, you Scorpions, not we, I'm not a Scorpion, but but uh, the, the Scorpion energy will, will stuff and mm, suppress things, and that's what creates this festering that will come up, you know, as a volcano or a stinger later on, but when you're expressing it, you're going to see the uh, consequence come back to you, the feedback come back to you only three days after this whatever talk you had, three to four days, and I see a delightful expression on your face as you're thinking, wow, that worked. And it wasn't that scary to do so. You know, it's like sometimes scorpions are afraid to express their, their real feelings because they're vulnerable, and there's that underlying fear of being rejected. You know, and, and it's because they're, they're ruled by Pluto, so they have that little feeling, and maybe some of you can relate to that. But don't fear expressing those true inner cores, because that's what's going to lift you up and out of that very fear that you fear. And then I see how also the Sun is feeling that Saturn is now coming together, Venus is coming together with Saturn. This is the first house of who you are, how you express yourself and that new foundation that you're growing, that 28 year cycle, like I said. So maybe what's taking place here on the 8th to 11th is part of the new program that you could put into your bio uh, software that will allow to run with you, not just here on the 8th and 11th, not just here for January or 2014, but that you can bring with you on this journey of this 28 year cycle. You see how powerful it is once we become aware of and then program it, you will have it with you for the rest of your journey. So really exciting here for you this first week or two of January. Then I see Mercury taking a break. It is moving out of this area of communication. It's moving into the fourth house of family, family values, really diving back in there and it's out of the mind back into this area where you can affect it a little bit more. And then we have a little test on Venus and Mars on the 16th. There's a square there. And this is between what you desire and what you can yeah, So there's together. a little test there on your, your Venus and Mars. So Mars is wanting to go one direction and Venus is wanting to do this direction. So you might have, have to make a choice here on the 16th. 
for you, this is going to be between your 12th house and also your, your third house. So it might be mm, the choice of even either having to go out and do something actively or having the choice to kind of stay inside and do that quiet thing that Mars is needing. Mars is still needing not to necessarily heal, but to recharge batteries, okay? So try to refrain from overstretching what it is you're doing here right now. Then we have an unexpected good news surprise, January 17th. Mercury communication here, it's uh, also between this uh, um, the fourth house of home and Uranus, which is change coming from maybe uh, hmm, something from your near surroundings. It is uh, also connected somehow to co-workers and uh, uh, perhaps even pets. We can find pets here uh, on the, in this area of this house. And uh, also, it could also be just something within health coming in here too. Then we have uh, January 20th, the sun is moving into this area, same area of the sixth house, which is health, day-to-day -day activities, streamlining it, also you getting on a regime here, being a little bit more health conscious uh, today and for the next 30 days. And then we have Mercury and Mars, uh, that is your mind, it's your communication, it's the way you, you work here with your physical activities, which is Mars too really aligning itself well. And this is now maybe what, where you had a choice to do something on the 16th. You might have taken a rain check for it. This is a so much better day to do it on the 24th. So that's a little delay there for a little bit more than a week, but a great day to catch up on that. Then we have also another unexpected surprise, and we love these days of happy surprises throughout the month. That is January 29th. For you here, uh, Scorpio, it is going to be coming either from the area of siblings or neighbors, uh, your close community perhaps. It might also come through uh, a phone call, an email, uh, or a text, and it may uh, pertain to something that is new and exciting. Then we have a revisit to where you were somewhere here in the beginning of August of 2013. A decision that came up that probably called for some kind of resolve or answer doesn't look like you found that answer for you right here this will be between a third house of communication and your day-to-day -day activities uh, running around having errands and then also uh, the busyness and the pressure that you feel in daily communication and where you just want to split off and go should I say explore new horizons. Jupiter up there in the ninth house, uh, perhaps wanting to take on a new class or a new course. And Jupiter wants to expand the higher mind, not just the mindset down here where we're bound by daily communication and responsibilities and, and so forth, but wanting to find a new tract for yourself. So whatever started in August, well, here we go again. You'll know a little bit more where you stand with that half decision it's like you're tasting it okay because we're going to have a retrograde jupiter is retrograding behind it uh, back around to it and now it won't say well do you really like what you decided here in august is this what you want it's going to have you mm, reevaluate a little bit and you may not still be sure quite yet as long as it's passing through by retro but then come later spring it's going to turn around and cross it one more time, last time, cross over it, and it won't revisit this spot again for another 12 years. So by end of spring, you will know exactly whether that was what you wanted or not, but you have been testing those new grounds, and it could be a study, a class, or something of some education, since it is the ninth house, right? So this is pretty much what we have here for you this month. Scorpio, as you see, it's going to be quite intense, quite potent, but very, very interesting here for you. So tune back in for your February forecast. And in the meanwhile, now, before you log off, totally go listen to your moon and your rising sign. And I'll see you next month. Bye now.